I can't believe this, Ron, but there is a professor. His name is Toba Levi from King's College in London. And he's saying that Billy is right, that he's been doing some, I don't even understand the testing exactly, but he's with us now, Toba Levi. And he says that Billy's right and that you're wrong. So what is this? I, I don't even, how can he possibly be wrong? Um, listen, I don't know who Toba, Woba, whatever his name is, um, is, is talking about, but if he is suggesting that you should snuggle or cuddle any wild animal, um, he is giving very bad information. Um, this is not to say that people should not have sympathy and empathy for wild animals that may be hurt, but you don't snuggle or cuddle wild animals. It's a dangerous thing to do. It benefits nobody. Okay, but hold on just a second. Toba's on the line, though, Ron. So Good. Uh, Let me speak to him. Okay, uh, you can speak to him right now. Go ahead. Toba, please, go ahead. Pause. Toba, your line is muted. Can you unmute yourself, Toba? Hello? Hey, yes. Uh, hello? First off, I want to say uh, Mr. McGill is correct. Please. <laughs> Do not misunderstand me, what we are working on. We are not saying that people should be approaching wild animals. My son, Scotty, is a very big fan of this show. And he heard this and he said, Dad, this is the kind of work you're doing. You should call in. So first and foremost, Mr. Gill is correct. I'm not saying people should be approaching wild animals, but we are doing some interesting work. I thought you would find fascinating uh, with the pattern mirroring of animals uh, using uh, their olfactory lobe and movement. Mr. McGill, as you know, animals identify a lot through movement and smell, Absolutely. Uh, whether something is prey or not. And I am a behavioral neurologist. I do not do what you do, and I appreciate what you do very much. But we have been doing some interesting experiments. I thought maybe the show would find interesting. Uh, we actually, using scent manipulation and movement patterning, patterning we have uh, been successfully have approached uh, northern Canada, several wolverines, and I don't know if Mr. Levertard has access to our website, but I was able to have a Wolverine, uh, to approach a Wolverine uh, using manipulation, using mirroring, and to have one come into my arms. And I was able to get in, into a, a makeshift hammock we had set up, and the Wolverine did, in fact, fall asleep next to me. Uh, once again, no one should do this. It is very dangerous, but my son loves the show. And he asked if I would call in to share a these experiments wild, we've been a, doing. A wild Wolverine? That that doesn't sound possible. Is that right, Ron? That can't be right, can it? You know, I, I think I think it is always possible to mirror certain behaviors, certain gestures, certainly using certain things like sense, which animals you know depend very much on their sense of smell, sometimes more than their sense of eyesight. Um, However, it is not probable. Um, it is it is possible. I don't want to. You want to keep an open mind and and not rule out anything. But at the same time, it's not probable. And as the gentleman was saying, uh, certainly would never ever uh, imply to anyone that you know what. If you study this, you you can try this and see what happens. Uh, because more often than not, you're not going to get that reaction. Um, and, you know, you, you can find a million videos online of animals doing things that are total ano anom anomalies as far as their natural behavior is concerned. Billy, uh, and the, only, the, only, the only thing I would say is that, uh, this is a peer-reviewed uh, study that we have done. Uh, once again, uh, using scent, using pattern movements to uh, uh, animals have very simple wiring. They see things as prey. They see things as members of their own species. Maybe there's a parental relationship. We did a study with a Komodo dragon, which is a very simple creature, smells with its tongue using its Jacobson's gland. And we were able to manipulate the smell or movement. And I was able to have a large, large Komodo dragon approach me and to touch uh, near sensitive parts of its body and it 
I, I wouldn't use the word laugh, but it, you, it did make certain sounds when I touched certain you, parts of its body. Doctor, I'm wearing protective gear. This is peer reviewed. No one should do this. Professor, you but I was. Are, it, are you claiming you tickled a Komodo dragon? That's what, you, that, and it laughed. That's what you're claiming. It, it, a Komodo dragon is not capable of laughter, Mr. Labrador. But the the animal did make sounds that are not normal to its its pattern behavior. Uh, by touching sensitive areas. Uh, you could call that laughter if you want, but I did spend 20 minutes with the Komodo dragon, once again, wearing protective gear. Uh, several uh, people with tranquilizer guns were around me. This was done in a safe environment, but yes, the Komodo dragon did emit sounds that could be compared to laughter. I did scratch under its chin through manipulation of scent, through predated uh, behavior patterns and movements, I was able to achieve this. Most recently, and you may have seen this on the news. Hold on, uh, Professor, hold on. Because yeah, Ron, McGill, Ron McGill wants to counter here, and so does Bill. Yeah, yeah. well, let, let me just say this. You know, I myself have raised a, a Komodo dragon to about seven and a half, almost eight feet, uh, and was able to work with that animal, uh, condition myself to its behavior. Um, I actually brought that animal on the David Letterman show, put it on his desk. Um, so I'm not saying that you cannot work with an animal. You know, for instance, body language. I've been on a mountainside in Rwanda and had a silverback gorilla come up to me. And just by doing certain sounds, uh, by making certain physical movements, there is a certain communication that is done between the animals that way. But to my original point, I am not... Uh, you don't go and hug and cuddle an no. wild animals. That's my original Ron, point. Ron, you on. absolutely do not do that. Once again, this is a peer-reviewed study in a very safe environment. I, wait, the, wait, the one you may have read Toba, about hold on, on the on, news Toba, is Toba. we were able to Professor, to please, please hold on just a second. Please hold on, okay? Tranquilizer guns and touching animals. Uh, Billy, what do you have here? This is outrageous. Like, I don't understand. I ask a simple question and I get laughed out of the room and completely dismisses. This is so dumb. What a stupid question. You're just trying to agitate the zoo, man. And now we have some behaviors coming on here saying these things actually are possible. And it's like, oh, well, you know what? Maybe it is possible. I feel like I'm owed an apology. Ron, I'm just uh, going to say it. Ron, you know what, I, Billy? Ron, now, listen I, up here, Billy. Uh, not once did I say uh, it's not possible to touch a wild animal and what I said is you don't go and hug Ron, and cuddle wait, wait, wild we've animals. Established. Start with a touch and then Ron, you build your way up. Wait, okay. Billy, Ron, Billy Ron. let's get to the original question. You don't hug and cuddle wild Ron. animals. Ron. Okay. No. I did I did I, I did spend uh, 20 minutes with a wolverine in a hammock. The the more recent story you may have heard about was and these photos are available online, was we were able to find a very large macro shark in the North Pacific, uh, nine feet long. Professor? And sharks, uh, very, very simple brains. Hold on, Professor. Okay, because I'm on this website now, Ron, and it, it I mean, I'm looking at pictures. He's kissing a, a king cobra. He's taking a bubble bath with a hyena. I'm looking at the pictures here, Ron. What happened with a mako shark? I was able to approach the shark through, uh, once again, motion, sense, uh, sharks use electromagnetic sense to uh, identify prey and erratic movement. And I was able to hold the mako shark in my arms. And I, I don't know who listens to your show, so I'll say this in a delicate way. I was able to touch, it was a female, to touch its sexual organs in a way that calmed the large fish very much so. And uh, it was in my arms quite willingly. Sharks need to move to breathe, so not that long. But for a good five minutes, once again, I had protective gear on. This is a peer-reviewed study. You wait a minute. You fingered a mako the, shark? Uh, Dan, Dan, listen. Uh, we're going down a very slippery slope here, okay? I want to make it clear to listeners that you do not go out and attempt to hug and snuggle with wild animals. I will say, listen, I've gone swimming with alligators. And you can do things with alligators underneath the water where you can, you know, gently stroke the bottom of their, their head and swim with them and without, without an issue. I would never say that, though, because what people are listening to here, they're saying, oh, wait a minute. They said you can hug and snuggle. Oh, look at this little cute little rat. Well, they absolutely should not. Absolutely, absolutely not. Okay. Absolutely not. We agree on but I did, I did finger a mako shark. Uh, I, I, I tried looking up this website and it wouldn't come up here at work. 
So I got off of the Wi-Fi and I checked it out on my phone. This is a smut site. And the tranquilizer guns are starting to make a lot more sense to me. That is. This is peer-reviewed. Uh, I teach at King's College in London. So I, I don't appreciate that. Uh, scientists are under enough attack in our society without that. Uh, have I, uh, I guess the term you would use in America, uh, have I jerked off a polar bear? Yes, I have. I have done that. If you want to call that smuts, I call it a study. Wow. Wow. Well, again, let me get back to the original point here. Make it clear as day. You don't go hug and snuggle wild animals. You got that, Billy? Yeah, Ron, I see your finger Ron, up there, Billy. What do you want to say? You're one well, note on this, Ron. Between like. us, though, like off the record, because you just said that you you can play with alligators, but you wouldn't say it so people don't get hurt. So, like, just pretend it's us. Yeah, yeah, okay. What okay. animals can you actually <laughs> snuggle? No, I, I, I wouldn't snuggle any wild animals. I just wouldn't have, do it. I, I, it never should anyone. I want to make this clear. Again with Never this. should anyone do it. Mr. McGill is correct. But that... Having been can you, said, can you say that? I, can you I, say that sound bite, please? Say that, please. I, I, no, but this is you're talking out of both sides of your mouth because you're very clearly very molesting good. these animals. I feel like we're kind of losing the plot here, guys. Yeah, the Komodo dragon. It seems like you are a lot more than tickling the Komodo dragon. I have there. There are levels of intimacy for our study that we must explore because this is a study. I'm a uh, behavioral neurologist. So have I 69'd a Nile crocodile? Yes, I have. It, it was okay. for a science. All right, all right, all right, all right. I, I, I think I've been had here. I think I've been had I think In these guys have been defense peer reviewed. Okay, okay, wait a minute. Let me go. What's this guy's name? What's his name? Toba his, what? His name is Toba Levi. And I'm Dr. I'm Toba Levi. I've studied with Amos Tversky uh, from the University of Jerusalem. Now I teach at King's College in London. This is a peer reviewed study, Mr. McGill. You will... You will find no issues with it. my credentials. Ron, what are you doing? You're looking something up well, on no. your phone, Ron? Who are the what, peers? Ron, I think this is on the dark web. Peer reviewed by whom? Spell his last name. It, his name? You're, what are you looking up here, Ron? I, his I, name? I, I got a Toba Borgnine, but that's not the guy. Who is? What, what, it, what's his last name? His name is Toba Levi, and he is King's College in London, and we've gone about 10 minutes too Why long Why do you here. have to research? The guy just told you he's 69 to cry. This is, now this is my son asked me to call in. I thought this was a fun thing and you're questioning my credentials. You, you, uh, I'm peer reviewed. I teach at King's College. Okay, okay. But when you tell me, when you tell me, sir, with all due respect, when you come on here and you say you have 69 to Nile Crocodile, <laughs> do you understand what that means? Okay, that means that not only... Are you giving pleasure to the crocodile? But the crocodile is giving pleasure to you. At least and that, is an, okay. that is an <laughs> accurate description of what happened. This was really, a, really uh, a well, fourteen foot in this, Nile in, crocodile. In this, in this in this country, sir, that in most states is illegal. It's considered bestiality. So I, 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 I listen with all due respect to your peer reviews. I'd like to see who your peers are. I think these guys on this Levitar show have been pulling my chain here. Um, uh, Tobi Levi has got urban and street photography. That's the only thing that comes up on Google. So I, I enjoy photography oh. in my spare time. I do not That's see. It. Have I put my finger in the anus of a lynx? Yes, okay. I have. I, I got it. I got it. Thank you, guys. Okay. All right. We're done. Thank you. I hope you all enjoyed that very much, especially you, Mr. Toba. That was just fantastic. Uh, I, I mean, I hope everybody listening to this is just cracking up and nobody wrecked their car. Because, you know what? I'm trying to be respectful. You guys trying to talk about science. <laughs> oh, really? You're all laughing. Have a good time, right? Okay. All right. All right. I hope you guys stay up at night thinking about these ideas. How are we going to get Ron this time? Oh, how are we going to get him this time? Sure. Hey, we'll get a guy who's 69 and now a crocodile. Very nice. Cuddled a wolverine in a hammock. Great, great. Fingered a shark. Wonderful, guys. Very respectful. You know what? All of you guys should go out and try to hug and snuggle a wild animal. Please go. Every one of you guys, I want you to go do it. I want but you to you do, it, do it. And I want you to have your peers review it, too. Okay? All right. Thank you very much. Okay. I hope you all have a nice week. <laughs> it's a 14 footer. I don't even. Oh, shot. I'm done. Goodbye. Do that. Goodbye. <laughs>